Today we are cooking a whole hog and there's nothing like it. That's right folks, today we are cooking a whole hog on the Meadow Creek 250. We've done a bunch of these and I gotta tell you, every time I pop up in the morning, I'm excited. I've been up since 3.50 in the morning where I got the fire started and we got all the preparation work done. I'm gonna go over a lot of tips in this video to make sure that your smoke doesn't just go well, but your presentation and what to do. Some hidden tips in there to make your pig cookout even better. First thing, I started off with my journal. That's right, the barbecue journal. I took notes from the last video, which I'll put up there, and this burner, when I did my practice run, was running super hot. So I made some adjustments to try to help get this fire exactly where I want it to be. So I've been running all morning around 250 to 275. So I'm gonna share with you those tips and why it was so crucial to get the barbecue journal and write down the way I wanted to cook this barbecue today. When people are doing a huge cook like this, a lot of times they feel a lot of stress and pressure. This, to me, is super easy. I'm just looking for wood, smoke, meat. That's it. I'm gonna let the meat and the smoke do the talking at the party. I'm not injecting it today. I'm not doing anything crazy. This is my baseline cook for whole hog. So all I did was add salt on top of it. I didn't add anything else. And I wanna do this because as I do other experiments with full hogs, I wanna know first, how much do I enjoy this just by itself? Just cooking in its own juices and creating that flavor with the wood, smoke, and just, just salt. Let's see how that turns out before we start injecting it and doing other things, adding different rubs to it. A couple quick notes regarding this cook. We have this butterfly right down the middle and the pig on its back. The reason we do it that way is the skin kind of acts as a bowl, all right? And it keeps all the juices, the fat, the meat cooking in itself. And that's been a recipe that's really worked for us in the past. So that's the, that's the reason we do that here. I have seen a lot of people do racer style pigs, stuff like that. It's very cool, uh, I don't have any experience with it we've always done it this way would i like to try it that way absolutely but for us for cooking for the fire department we're going to make sure we deliver the best quality meal for them that we know so we're going to do it this way keep it wide open on the back and let all those juices help cook down that pork so as you can see we have the fire going really well right now now the big difference between yesterday and today uh, where we had really high temperatures yesterday. Today, most of the logs I've been using, I actually cut in half. This is one of the first big ones I'm putting on there, uh, but I've been cutting them in half to keep that temperature lower. It's getting longer in the cook now. We're about at the five and a half hour mark, so I don't mind if we start putting in uh, wood that hasn't been cut down, but to reduce the heat, because we were really pumping heat yesterday. We were up to 400 degrees, which is just way too hot for what I'm trying to do. What I did was I moved the charcoal base back away from 
the door that leads to the main cooking chamber. So my hot embers have been further back today, which helps keep the flame from going into the main chamber. And when I use smaller pieces of wood, obviously it's going to produce less heat off those smaller pieces. So that's been keeping my temperature between 250 and 275. Uh, but like I just said, I'm okay with starting to add whole logs in it. I have a pretty good handle on what we're doing with this firebox, but that is a great tip for reducing your heat is moving your charcoal away from the mouth of the main cooking chamber and to cut your logs in half. Alrighty, we are five hours in. As you can see, this thing is looking amazing. We're just gonna keep slowly cooking away at it. Uh, I think we're on pace. I haven't checked the temperatures at all, uh, but we're getting on pace to be done in time. And I'll start checking the temperature probably around one o'clock, which is two and a half hours from now. And I'm not overly concerned that we're gonna be short on time. I think we're gonna be ahead of time, which I'm okay with because this thing will stay piping hot being in the smoker here, even if we really reduce the heat down, uh, it's gonna be just fine. Uh, but wow, this thing looks good now. It's gonna look amazing in a couple hours. We are on our way to the fire department. It's only, luckily for me, a mile and a half down the road. I cooked this at home, and now I'm taking the trailer uh, just a mile and a half down the road. Now, when you do this, you have to be very alert, which obviously I'm doing a great job of right now. Um, be very alert because you don't want to slam on your brakes. You don't want your pig to go flying you want to accelerate slowly and stop slowly. So there's a tip if you're showing up uh, with your pig in the trailer behind you. Now the other tips, all right, this was actually a really easy cook. Everybody's super intimidated uh, by pigs, uh, this doing the whole thing. This actually took less time than it would to cook just the Boston butt. I don't know why that is, but this thing was done in about seven hours. A 10 pound Boston butt typically takes about 11 to 12 hours. It just, holy, the whole thing encompassed and just got cooked. I don't know what it is. Now, the tips that I also wanna tell you, if you don't have a digital thermometer or an instant read thermometer, one of the ways to tell your pig is done is you saw me pull that bone right out. All right, there's a simple trick. When bones start coming off without any meat coming off with it, it's done, it's cooked. So that's a way to tell that you're good to go. Uh, this thing finished around two o'clock and I kept it on a low heat in the 150s to 200 to let the temperature come down a little to let the meat rest. All right, the other thing I'm doing is losing my camera. Sorry, a deer just walk, walked by. The other thing I'm doing is I want to debone half of this pig. All right, and the reason I want to do that is I want to mix all the, the uh, bacon, the ribs, and the shoulders, and the butt meat together. All right, I had to pull over. My camera kept falling down, fun times. The reason I don't want to have this ready to go as soon as I show up uh, dinner is in about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, I added an extra piece of wood to the firebox. I have it sort of smoldering because when you're serving in an event like this, what you want to do is create the experience. So I want my guests that are eating the fire department, I want them to smell that smoke still, you know, rolling off the smoker. I want them to see the whole pig 
and then they want to jump right in, but it's going to take me about 15 minutes to debone half of it, mix the meat together. So they're going to see the whole pig, but then they can't touch it. They can't eat it yet. So this is a tip on how to, you know, people eat with their eyes first. Uh, they need to smell it. You don't want people showing up. They had a late lunch. They're not really hungry. And now they're jumping into your food. It might not be a good, it might not be as good of an experience versus they see it, they smell it, they can't touch it just yet. Uh, so that kind of helps create a better eating experience. And that's what I'm looking to do is I want to make sure that they remember this pig roast and it tasting delicious. I'm going to make them wait just an extra, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, uh, even though I'm early and it'll be right on time. Whenever you have a smoker like this, you got a pig on it, people are going to be walking around. They want to take a look. They want to take pictures. So this is just something to help that overall experience. So you can see we just devoured this whole side of the pig. Uh, sorry, I couldn't record. There was just a lot going on while I was pulling this apart. Uh, what I did was I started by taking out the bones just everywhere possible throughout this whole side. And then you look for these little pieces of cartilage that you don't want to serve to your guests. So you pick those out and discard those also. But the idea here is here where the, here's where the ribs were. And you're mixing rib meat with bacon meat with shoulder meat, with Boston butt meat, and you're just mixing it all together. So when they go to bite in that sandwich, they're getting some of that, you know, super tender bacon uh, pulled pork. They're getting the shoulder, they're getting the ribs. It's all mixing together and it's just absolutely, absolutely delicious. So it was a huge success and uh, I'll wrap up with some show notes. What a huge success. That pig roast was perfect. It did exactly what I wanted it to do, and that was wow the fire department. They went back for seconds. They were texting me the next day that all the food was gone. So just a massive success when it comes to just wood, smoke, meat. That's all you need. Those three things, uh, just salt on it. I didn't do anything fancy. Some notes I want to take away. Uh, I was able to dial in that temperature to 250 to 275. And since I don't use that smoker a lot, I wrote down all my notes. Uh, I've talked about this a bit. Guys, you don't need to buy this, all right? You can get a regular pad, uh, notepad, whatever you have. You don't have to spend, uh, I think it's on Amazon for $8.99 right now. Uh, I mean, it's awesome. It's got great tips in here, but you need to take your own notes. All right, the notes I took in here was I shut the firebox down. Remember, I started it super early. So I shut it down at 35 minute mark. All right, and that kept my bed of embers going better. When I do a pig roast next year, three months, a month from now, the first place I'm gonna look at is this. The other thing I did was I took smaller splits. I cut them in half and that kept me at the 250 to 275 range and I kept adding every 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, total time was 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. So now I know if I'm serving at five o'clock, I don't have to wake up so early next time around. I can get there, uh, I can get the fire going at five in the morning, have the pig on, and still be done in plenty of time. The results I wrote down, uh, pig was delicious, salt only worked great, but I do want to experiment. This was my baseline. What if I add some really flavorful rubs? What's that gonna do? I personally, I add a vinegar-based sauce once I mix all that meat together, right? The uh, pork belly, which I call the bacon throughout the video, the ribs, the shoulders, the butts, I mix that all together, all right? And then I sprinkle the vinegar-based sauce I use across it. And I think it just provides a packful they can still pick up a lot on the smoke flavor, but it's also giving them that extra zing right as they bite into it. All right, some additional notes I wrote down. Uh, there were no dry spots. I was really worried because I've seen friends inject their pigs before cooking it. And they said, definitely be worried about the loins. Uh, they can dry out. 
But since it was on its back and water and moisture stayed pooled up there, I wasn't overly concerned. The whole area, mixing it together, everything was super moist, like I said. However, if I do inject it, I wrote down that I do wanna make sure I get the shoulders injected really well. Uh, even though they weren't dry compared to the pork belly and the rib section, the loin section, um, they weren't as moist, but still moist and delicious. And the last notes I have written down here is, uh, my temperature never got to 203, and a couple spots it did uh, when I was poking around my instant read thermometer, but for the most part, the shoulders were at 195, and it was still pull apart. Uh, when I do a Boston butt, just a solo Boston butt, that needs to hit above 200 before I get that shred apart uh, from my experience, from the way I've cooked them. But for this, those temperatures never got there, and I was okay with that because as soon as I pulled that bone out, it was still uh, fall apart tender, pull apart, and it worked out great. So my notes are not to be overly concerned about hitting that 203 mark, which I traditionally do. Uh, 190s seemed to do the trick and I didn't wanna dry it out anymore. So that's just something uh, I, I'm glad I wrote down and have notes on. And the last thing I have is I'm, I'm a little bit shocked that my Boston butts take so much longer. This, this was done in seven hours. I was shocked by that, uh, where my Boston butts take 11 to 12 hours, and that's only a 10 pounder. So I think that has something to do with the skin and just the way it was cooked, uh, but that's something I wanna know for preparing for future cooks. That's it, it was pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, you guys, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, give me a big thumbs up, and leave a comment down below on what else you'd like to see me try. Make sure to check out the journal at comparisoncooking.com, and as always, I hope you're having a great day.